Hi guys! Salamat sa inyong patuloy na ginagawang pagsubaybay dito sa ating discussions about statics of rigid bodies. At ang magiging topic natin guys ay tungkol sa equilibrium of concurrent force system sa kung saan ay uh, ipapakita natin guys ang iba pang mga pamamaraan kung paano mag-solve ng equilibrium of concurrent force system. May mga pagkakataon kasi guys na uh, hindi appropriate yung mga nauna nating na laman kaya dapat marami tayong mga strategies at mga approaches na naitatabi para kung sakaling maka-encounter tayo ng ganitong klase ng problem ay magagamit natin ito lalong lalo na kapag may mga examinations tayong inakaharap. Guys, ito yung problem. Ano, ipakita natin yung problem. So, in the problem, we are required here to find for the value of P and T if the force system shown in the figure is in equilibrium. So, kung mapapansin natin guys, ay mayroon tayo ditong apat na forces that are concurrent and it is indicated in the problem na kung saan ito ay equilibrium. Dalawa sa apat ay unknown forces. So kung babalikan natin yung mga nauna nating discussions at pag-aaralan natin kung yun ba'y appropriate na gamitin sa problem na ito, eh maunawaan natin kung ano ba dapat yung mga eh, approaches or methods na dapat natin gamitin. Sa situation ito, Dahil ang number of forces acting concurrently ay apat, sa makatwid, hindi na akma na gamitin dito yung tinatawag nating force triangle method. Maaaring ang uh, tipin nating pinakamabilis na paraan, edi yung rotated axis. However, mayroon ding limitation yung rotated axis. Yun ay appropriate at madaling gamitin kapag ang direction ng forces ay given in terms of the angle with respect to some reference axis like a the horizontal or vertical axis. Samantalang dito sa problem natin, hindi ganun ang situation. Ang direction ng forces, lalong lalo na yung dalawang unknown, ay given in terms of the slope. So that the T here is a inclined up to the right at a slope of 4 vertical and 3 horizontal. Samantalang ito namang AP, which is directed down to the left, is inclined to horizontal and 1 vertical. Kaya, kung gagamitin natin yung tinatawag nating rotated axis somehow, eh, medyo matatagalan tayo kasi hindi directly given yung angle. But, but if we are to use the conventional approach that is uh, resolving the forces into horizontal and vertical components, maaring yun ang ating gamitin. At sa pamagitan nga nun ay ipakikita pa natin yung isa pang posibleng magamit natin, yun yung ginagamit natin na summation of moment na kung saan, we are trying to eliminate one of the unknowns by taking moment about a point along its direction. Katulad halimbawa dito sa problem na ito, kung sakaling gusto nating pakuha ang value ng P, so kinakailangan ma-eliminate natin yung T by taking moment about any point along its direction since K okay, since moment will be zero, if the force will pass through that, that axis or that point. Diba? Kaya kapag take tayo ng moment about any point along the direction of T, then T will be eliminated in the equation. Kaya sa situation ito, ang gagawin natin okay, ay pipili lang tayo okay, ng isang uh, point along the direction of T. Na kung saan, Okay, ang kanyang horizontal and vertical okay, distance 
from any of a forces can be easily identified. Kaya ipakita natin dito guys itong ating solution. Ano? Gamitan natin ang Prussian. Ipakita natin dito yung ating solution. Okay? So, imagine natin that we consider okay, uh, any point along the direction of T. Any point along the direction of T. Direction of T. At sabihin natin, okay, ang pinili nating point is somewhere here. At itong point na ito, di ba? At ang kanyang distance from this, sabihin natin ang distance niya mula dito, hanggang doon ay 5. So makatwid, kung 5 siya, okay, ang magiging vertical distance nitong point na ito, at tawagin natin siyang point A, from the x-axis will be equal to 4. Will be equal to 4. Itong distance nito will be equal to 4. Okay, ano? Samantalang ang horizontal distance naman ng point A from this origin okay, will be equal to 3. Similarly, if you are going to resolve T into components, diba? T into components, so that we shall have here okay, the component of P along the x-axis. Tatawagin natin itong P sub x. Diba? And there will also be a component in the y-axis. At tatawagin natin siyang P sub y. In this particular A course, we can resolve P into components by applying by applying the ratio and proportion. Diba? So that in that particular case, we say, we say that P sub x is to 2 is proportional to P sub y to 1. And that if this value will be taken to be square root of 5, and that is all this sub ratio will also be equal to the magnitude of P to the square root of 5. So that, okay, so that yung value ng Px natin will be equal to 2 over the square root of 5 of P. Samantalang yung ating Py naman will be equal to 1 over the square root of 5 of P. Diba? Ngayon, if we will be taking summation of moment, we will be taking summation of moment about A equal to 0. From here, we can eliminate eliminate the force T and then solve. And we can solve here for the value of E. Masosolve natin dito yung value ng P. I-consider natin that the direction in the counterclockwise as positive. Sa so, makatwid, ang ating moment equation will be equal to. Okay? Itong ating 200 na nakikita dito will be creating a counterclockwise moment and therefore that would be positive. Pag isa-isa natin yan, so I will have here 200 multiplied by the moment arm na 4. This 100, itong 100 na nakikita natin dito, will also create a counterclockwise moment about A na kung saan ang kanya namang moment arm is equal to 3. Hence, that would also be positive. A 100 multiplied by 3. Whereas, A, yung PY, yung component ng P in the Y direction, will also be producing a counterclockwise moment and whose moment arm is also equal to 3. So we have also P sub Y. Diba? 
multiplied by 3. And P sub X will be producing a clockwise moment opposite our sign convention. And therefore, it will be negative na kung saan ang kanyang moment arm will also be equal to 4. So, we will have here P sub X multiplied by 4. And all of this will be equal to 0. And if we will be substituting the value of Px and Py in this equation, therefore, we shall be having the following. Ito pwede natin masimplify. This will be equal to 800, while this one will be equal to 300. Yung Py natin pwede substitute okay, with the value of a 1 over the square root of 5 of P. Therefore, this will be a P over the square root of 5 multiplied by 3. At samantalang ito naman px can be substituted with the value of 2 over the square root of 5 of p. So I will have here minus 2 over the square root of 5 of p multiplied by the moment arm of 4 and all of this shall be equal. If we will simplify this equation that is 2 multiplied by negative 2 multiplied by 4 equals negative 8. This will be subtracted with this one. So this will be negative 5 and then transposing it to the right. That would become negative or positive 5. And hence, I will have here an equation of 1100 representing the sum of 800 and 300. While on the right, I will have, okay, will be 5, 5p over a square root of 5. So, kapag isinimplify pa natin yan, kapag isinimplify pa natin ito, ano nga yung mangyayari? Okay. So, I will have here, gamitan natin ang calculator. So, you will have a value of P of 1,100. Okay. Times the square root of 5 divided by 5. At ang magiging sagot natin ay 492. P equals 491.9. pounds. Yan yung magiging sagot natin for our value of. Ba? Okay, and if you wanted to solve for the value of T, ba? if you wanted to solve for the value of T, okay, ang gagawin naman natin, yung pin naman ng ating i-eliminate. Diba? So, how are we going to do it? Okay, to do it, so, tatanggalin naman natin, o i-resolve naman natin yung ating t into component at mag-take naman tayo ng moment about any point in the direction of p. And I will assume, assuming that, ang ating pagkukuna ng point is point b. Halimbawa, sabihin natin na kunin natin itong point b na ito ang distance from ang distance from O will be equal to the square root of 5. So, tawagin natin itong point B na kung saan ang distance from A O is the square root of 5. Lalabas na ang vertical distance nitong B from this point will be equal to 1 at ang horizontal distance naman niya from the same point will be equal to 2. And if T will be resolved into components will be resolved into components so that yung kanyang component will be shown by this okay, direction. Ito yung kanyang component. Diba? So, meron tayo dito okay, T sub Y at meron tayo dito T sub X. Yung direction nito, okay, ito naman yung ating T sub X. That, okay, using the same okay, uh, Concept, we can resolve T sub X and T sub Y into, uh, uh, we can solve for T sub X and T sub Y by the ratio and proportion so that T sub X is 2, the X component 3, as T sub Y is 2, the Y component of 4, as T is 2, 5. Sa so, makatwin, yung ating T sub X will be equal to 3 fifth of 80. Samantalang yung ating a t sub y will be equal to 4 fifth of 
Now, kapag na-solve natin yan o na-express natin yan, okay, when we sum up moment here, kapag nag-sum up tayo ng moment, okay, ng moment dito sa KB, diba? and we consider the direction in the counterclockwise as uh, positive, dito tayo mag-take sa point na ito, sabi na ito. Pakita natin ito dito sabi na ito. Diba? So, we will be taking moment summation here. Okay, what will be our moment sum? Unahin muna natin yung mula doon sa a given. So, I will have here a 100 and 200 both creating clockwise moment. So, I will have negative. Okay, tingnan natin yung kanyang a force due to 200. I will have negative of 200 multiplied by the moment arm of 1. Okay, minus 100 multiplied by the moment arm of 2. Okay, this is for the 200 and the 100. While for the component of T, okay, yung Tx natin will be producing a clockwise moment about B and whose moment arm is also equal to 1. Hence, I would have here minus Tx multiplied by 1 while Ey will be producing a clockwise moment about B and whose moment arm is equal to 2. I will have here plus t sub y multiplied by 2 and all of this will be equal to 0. Now if we will be substituting here yung t sub x ng value i okay, ng value i uh, 3.5 dito sa part na ito. No? Samantalang yung t sub y naman ang value niya is 4 over 5 of t. Di ba? So substitute natin yung value dito. I will have negative I will have negative 200 minus 200 also. So, yun, ano? Okay. Minus T sub X, which is equal to 3 fifth of T. Multiplied by 1. A okay, plus T sub Y, which is equal to 4 fifth of T. Multiplied by 2. Will be equal to 0. Ayun, kapag sinimplify natin yan. Okay. Itong... 4 and 2 will be equal to 8. Kapag minultiply natin dito, o uh, itad natin to will be equal to 5. I will have therefore, okay, 8 and 5, you will have okay, 8 and 5. So that this becomes 5 over 5, or simply that becomes equal to T. Then the other one will be simplified. So you can have transposing E to the right. So this becomes 4 and so, okay. 4 5, 8 divided by 4. Okay, so tama ito. Ano? So makikita natin yan. Ang kanyang value ay 400. Kaya guys, sa ipinakita kong halimbawa ay nakikita ninyo, na, nakita ninyo yung isa pang approach. Ano? So paano tayo mag-solve ng problem. Kaya dahil nakita nyo na yung mga different approaches, uh, mapag-aaralan ninyo kung paano siya gamitin at malalaman ninyo kung alin ba yung mas mabilis at mas madaling i-apply. Kaya guys, eh, huwag ninyo akong iiwan sa ating pinagawang pag-aaral. Ano? Kaya tuloy-tuloy lang tayo. Kung hindi ka pa nakakapag-subscribe, isubscribe itong channel para ma-inform ka every time that I have a uploaded a video. Once again, thank you very much for